Graham, I interviewed you some time ago for The Telegraph magazine. We spoke at length about what it was like to be cancelled. I mean, looking back to see that you were permanently banned from Twitter, now known as X, in June 2020 for tweeting men aren't women, though, in response to a post by the Women's Institute wishing a happy pride to its trans members would strike most people as pretty extreme, although you were accused of repeated violations of our rules against hateful conduct and platform manipulation. But was it the point that you were banned from X, the point that you said to yourself, my God, I've been cancelled, or did it come earlier or later? Oh, no, it was much earlier than that. It was as soon as I started talking about women's rights. And, I mean, the Twitter ban just came after a lot of different people had been banned already. People like Megan Murphy, a very big Canadian um, uh, feminist who had to actually leave Canada because of uh, what happened to her. She was banned for five years. Uh, Posey Parker was banned for even longer than I was. And essentially what happened is Twitter is very is very much the same as uh, uh uh, Wikipedia and other online spaces in that it is kind of moderated and policed by people who are either trans identified themselves or people who believe in the ideology. So uh, for what we had while while myself and a lot of these women were were taken off Twitter was a space where it could go unchallenged, you know, and as we know, it just grew and grew and grew until we have some of the crazy stories we now see coming out in the papers and so on. And my reputation has been manipulated by these people to such an extent that even those close to me think it's true. OK, so we'll discuss your fight back against cancellation in just a moment. To reiterate what you've lost, I mean, you're this kind of leading comedy writer, the brains behind Father Ted and all the rest of it. You don't just lose your livelihood. Your marriage also suffers and collapses under the strain of everything that's happened. You're trying to put a stage show on of Father Ted. There's attempts to remove you from the credits. You've written about all of this in your autobiography, Tough Crowd, How I Made and Lost a Career in Comedy. Just speak us through how difficult it was to cope with being cancelled on so many different levels. Um. Well, there's kind of two sides to it. Basically, the, the the online cancellation, which is just a bunch of, you know, faceless accounts, it could be anyone, uh, that wouldn't have been so bad. I could have withstood that if I'd had anyone standing up for me. It's so strange. I genuinely thought, and I've said this many times, that, that I, I genuinely thought that as soon as I started saying that children are being hurt, women are, are losing their uh, words and their spaces, um, and are being harassed uh, online and off for their beliefs. I thought all my good, decent liberal friends would would flock around the subject and and try and help. But it, it's it, in the end, it was a kind of collab. My cancellation was a collaboration between some of the worst people on the internet and my closest friends. So uh, I'm I, I'm just kind of still stunned by it. Um, and I'm stunned also by the people who didn't quite cancel me, but never spoke up. You know, I've, I've made friends all through all through my career and not a single one of them stood up and said, hang on a second. You know, Graham Linehan is not a bigot. Of course, women need fair sports. Of course, women need uh, 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 single sex spaces. Of course, children, children shouldn't be experimented on. None of them, none of them had the guts to say even that. So. I, I, I'm just in this extraordinary position. I, for the first three years, I was kind of uh, veering in and out of despair, desperately trying to make money um, and feeling, uh, and, and you know, it was during COVID as well. So the isolation was was quadrupled because of that. So it's been, um, it's been uh, very, very uh, destabilizing. But luckily, you know, the community that I found uh, which is a community of incredibly brave people, people like Rosie Kay, the choreographer who was cancelled, people like um, uh, Maya Forstadter and and, the, and and Kate Harris and Bev Jackson of, of LGB, LGB Alliance. Uh, these these people are extraordinarily brave, all being as misrepresented as I am. And so, you know, I found a better... We, we used to have a joke about being cancelled. We, we called it the welcome to the better friends part of your life. 
you know. And uh, yeah, so that's what it's been, really. It's been tough, but there was kind of some light at the end. And finally, I'm actually making a bit of a living from my journalism, which uh, I give all my stuff away free because I think the subject is too important. But I've got enough decent people uh, who pay anyway uh, that it's just keeping me going. So, so yeah, it's been rough, but like coming out of it now and uh, coming out of it with a much better of under- much better understanding of you know what they call the banality of evil. You know, it can it can really sneak up on you. Here we are. <laughs> you know, I've got a bunch of people quite prepared to see me. You know, I could have I could have been easily been suicidal during all that time. Not a single person called to check on me, you know. And um, yeah, it's it's like uh, you, you just get to see this kind of appalling conformity that people have naturally and how it can be manipulated uh, by the Internet. Do you, do you think at any stage, you know, through, you know, obviously that very tough time for you that you were going through, that you could have approached this differently? You've obviously been criticised, particularly on social media, for some of your more aggressive language. You once uh, said on social media, almost every central trans figure is a nonce. And also, I mean, you've just touched on it here, but this um, narrative around the Nazis, you've also used around puberty blockers saying that uh, the use of it uh, for gender dysphoric children was similar to Nazi experiments. Is there anything that mm-hmm. you've learnt, you think, in the, in the number of years you've faced this, given that, given that you were rejected by your very close friends and working colleagues? As Camilla says, your marriage um, has uh, collapsed. I think just speaking from my own sort of personal experience, if, if, if I was in a situation where the people that I trusted that I loved, were all saying what you are doing is not helping a very complicated debate. I think I would try and learn something maybe from that. But some uh, would how, say how you, you I, how, double how down. I have acted differently? No, no, I'm asking you. I, 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 I'm not saying whether I agree or disagree whether you should have done. I'm just asking no, I mean, whether, whether there's what, anything this, from what this is you... Going back to my, this is going back to my conduct. And my conduct was informed by people sending uh, abuse to my wife, uh, by uh, people writing to my employers. At the very start of this, I, I observed all the niceties. I didn't dead name. I didn't uh, uh, misgender. Didn't do any of those things that we were told were these terrible crimes. Turns out they're not terrible crimes. It's just a bunch of uh, very entitled people trying to force us what to say and think. So if it's strong language, it reflects a strong situation. And it reflects that, you know, children are not safe. Women are not safe with some of these men. Now, I want to make it very clear. I'm not talking about all people who identify as trans. I am talking about about how easy it is to identify as trans. And therefore, predators can enter that space and do whatever they like. We've we've created an absolute uh, Disneyland for predators. Why did you decide, Graham, of all of the hills to die on, that it would be this one? And do you regret it, any of it? No, because it's half the population. It affects half the population. You know, we saw we, recently we've seen a, um, a, a man beat a woman up in the boxing ring in front of millions of people at the Olympics. You know, like, like I never thought it would get that far. I never thought human beings would go, yes, this is allowable. We will, we will watch as this woman gets punched by a man who has longer reach, greater body mass, higher punching power, faster twitch reflexes. I never thought we would let the world go downhill to that extent. And yet here we are. And the Olympics have come and gone. And meanwhile, women are losing places on podiums. They're, they, you know, in a contact sport like boxing, they could, they could well lose their life. It, it's absolutely extraordinary that, that, to me, that people don't care. And when people say, why is this your hill to die on? I, I always just think, well, why isn't it yours? You know, don't you have wives? Don't you have mothers? Don't you have sisters and daughters? You know, or aren't you one of those people? Why would you not care? It, you know? it might not be quite. It might not be quite that binary to use a word in this conversation. <laughs> Some people will agree with many of the points you make. Sebastian Coe has been very clear for World Athletics right. around the difference between. Uh, women born and men born people in sport needs to be recognised. As you say, some of the sporting authorities have not gone far enough. 
But you can have quite reasonable debates and discuss that and come to the right conclusions. Is there anything, do you think, in what in your um, actions and behaviour that has meant you've become part of the sort of what might be described as the culture war rather than the societal conversation we need to have? Is there something in you that's led to this battle or is it, is it everybody to get? But then again, there possibly is. I'm an Irishman. I don't really care about, uh, um, you know, uh, I, I like to be funny. I think this whole situation is utterly ridiculous. So I'm perhaps not the best person to be always out front. But no one else was doing it. You know, if I wasn't writing the journalism that I'm writing, recently I wrote a piece about how the uh, BBC was captured by gender ideology. No one else does it. You know, there's a few voices, sure. But when I started, there certainly wasn't. So, so again, I ask, why was mine the lone voice? Why am I the person who's reporting on uh, a, a case in Australia where uh, a, a woman named Angie Jones is having her life absolutely destroyed by a combination of trans activists and disgusting, journal, uh, disgusting politicians? Why am I the only one reporting on this? Where are, all the, where are all the journalists talking about this? Where are all the polite panel discussions with trans activists? I'll tell you, they don't exist because when trans activists are invited on to do a program and they hear that anyone else on the other side is invited, they cancel. So they've made sure that there's been no discussion about this issue for the last five years. And so I just thought, well, I'm just going to punch through that and I'm going to keep saying the things I'm saying until the conversation opens up. And again, if I'm not the right person to do that, then please feel free to wade in. Graham, is the conversation opening up? I mean, you did receive an apology recently. Just talk us through that and tell us whether you think the pendulum might be slowly swinging in the other direction. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we're always asking ourselves this. I think the, I think the CAS report and the WPATH files in the US are a kind of a body blow, but but they haven't really been, the, the effects of them haven't been haven't quite been felt yet. Uh, we're up against people who will 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 tell any lie to avoid facing either avoid facing the truth, which I think would make a lot of people embarrassed because they'll have to admit that for five years they've been ignoring a, a huge medical scandal, um, or uh, or simply because they believe it because they just can't let go of it because they told all their friends, yeah, you should transition. It's a great idea, you know. Um, and the results we're seeing at the moment, recently a young girl, 24 years old, died of liver failure because of, te because of uh, testosterone use. Um, uh, there was another death recently of a trans man. No one is telling these kids this, and they're deliberately uh, minimizing the cast report and trying to cast doubt around it, when in fact it's an impeccable but report. did the apology, Graham, from John Boyne, who was the author of The Boy in the Stripes Pajamas, who had been particularly vocally critical of you and then basically sort of took a step back and said, hang on, I'm not sure. I think I might have been wrong about Graham Linehan. Actually, maybe he had a point. I mean, I felt that that was a little bit of a turning point for you. Was it? Yeah, I mean, the real turning point has been has been uh, getting a lot more subscribers on my Substack, and And suddenly I'm able to actually relax, not worry about um, my income, uh, you know, I've actually been able to start paying my, my mum money again every month, which I used to be able to do when I was a TV writer. Um, and that's been the real turning point. I don't know if that came with the John Boyne thing, but it might have. It, it certainly didn't hurt. You know, uh, it was a really decent thing of John to do. And I immediately accepted it and, and we moved on, you know. Uh, now he's he's uh, he's just another sane voice in this. And he is, I think, facing the same things that we, that everybody else faces, you know, sudden sudden uh, uh, withdrawals of invitations to certain uh, literary festivals and things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, cancellation is 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 always uh, what's the word? Uh, there's a shock when uh, <laughs> you know when you get tailored for uh, what's the word? It begins with B. Um, bespoke. Bespoke. Uh, trans activists specialize in bespoke harassment. So, so you know, depending on on what your your uh, uh, your your weaknesses are, or your your uh, again, my, my, the, the word's gone out of my uh, uh, head, but uh, they'll find a way. You know, like like for instance, when I was popular, and I thought that everybody loved me because <laughs> I wrote Father Ted and things like that. We had a business, and we put our we put our home address on the business. Um, 
uh, on the business name. Now, you know, you, you do things like that uh, when people like you. You don't you never expect that things will turn around. And as soon as they did, um, you know, we were doxxed and someone found that business and, and, and put my my family's address online. So it's, uh, you know, and Rowling is interesting because Rowling is a billionaire. So the way they try and hurt her is by taking her name off school buildings and all that sort of thing. And in the most, I mean, one of the most um, petty and disgusting things they did to her was there was a there was a collection, I think it was the Royal Reading List. And um, it was like the 10 best children's authors or children's novels in the last 20 years. And they didn't put her on it, you know. So, so this is a kind of a, a, you know, it just depends on where where you are um, uh, in life. You know, if you're if you're if you're a working class woman who works as a social worker, they'll just write write to you, uh, write to your employers and try and get you fired. If they're if you're me, they write to Hattrick and tell tell uh, my producers I'm a bigot. And um, yeah, it's just it's just. Anyway, I'm sorry, I kind of forgot your question. No, there's no, some no, glimmers no. there. There are some glimmers there. I think this is interesting. There's a, a couple of points I would just like to, to ask you about, Graham. Have you seen any glimmers of hope of old friends reconnecting? Or do you think the arts world or the creative world, the world that you worked in, that you've been rejected by, do you think that is changing at all? That they have realised that you simply can't have this... Um, cancellation approach to people that you may or may not agree with? Has there been any evidence uh, that people have come back and said, actually, you're a bloody good script writer, you're a very, very funny writer, you should be able to re-enter, you know, the arts world of the UK and the world? No, because it, it, it's a, it's a, it's not a decision that a single person can make, you know? Like, if I was to make a TV show here, uh, the casting director would be contacted and told, you know, um, if you do this, we'll never use you for another job. You know, uh, an actor, actors would, would, would hear the same spiel. So even if an individual actor still supports me and likes me, um, uh, they just can't take the risk. And I notice as well that there's still being p- people being cancelled in uh, the comedy world. Women are, uh, every week I seem to hear about another woman who's being, um, who's being, uh, who's losing gigs and stuff like that. Um, it's, I don't know. It's. I, I also think that the arts world will be one of the will will be one of the last to uh, acknowledge that they've made a terrible mistake because they've ruined so many lives. I'm really interested, Graham. As as a man in this debate, we've had some really good discussions in this podcast. Um, Camilla herself and her experience, Jenny Lindsay, who we're talking to as well. Just interested as as a man in this debate. You said part of this was about women's rights. I just wondered if previous to getting involved in this debate you had been involved in other things where the um safety of women is is proportionally as big or a bigger issue if you think between 100 and 200 women are murdered by men every year rape convictions are at historic lows violence against women by men is increasing women are often frightened to walk the streets at night for example just to re, re, um, just to echo Camilla's question, why this particularly, or have I missed, and I may well have missed Graham, so forgive me, were you campaigning on all those other issues as well? Yeah, I campaigned. My wife and I ha- um, had a miscarriage. We needed to get an abortion, so we uh, toured Ireland um, uh, explaining that abortions weren't always, uh, you know, what people wanted, but they helped keep women safe. My, you, 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 uh, no offense, but you, you, you don't know me. I, I have been fighting uh, these battles for ages. And the thing that gets me ang- angrier than anything else is bullying. And so what you have is, is you have women who are trying to have a normal, uh, respectful conversation, and they're just having this hate thrown back at them. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's just something I noticed. I always notice when women are being, you know, when people are taking advantage of the fact that women aren't as, you know, bullish as I am, for instance. So I always used to step in. And that's what I first got into trouble trouble for. I, sa- I, I said, you know, stop calling. I, I said to someone, stop calling uh, women turfs. That was uh, picked up on, spread around. And suddenly I was in, the, in, in their bad books as well. You yeah. know, 
Graham, thank you very much as ever for talking with such candour on what you've experienced and um, really great to speak to you on the Daily Tea. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. Thank you.